everyone, I'm Travis Montague, founder and CEO of Holler, and also co-founder and CEO of Group Black. I'm joined with John Ryan Johnson, founder and CEO of Community. Ryan, how you doing? I'm good, man. Thanks, I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, tell everybody about Community. Yeah, so Community, our organization is, you know, our mission is to increase representation of minorities in the esports and video game industry. Uh, we do that really in two different ways, uh, through career development and also through competition. Uh, so we've taken the time over the last few years where we've built out curriculum and actually are partnering with institutions uh, like the Boys and Girls Club, as well as underserved K-12 institutions and HBCUs, uh, where we're exposing students to careers within the gaming industry, uh, where they can work within technology, within legal, within marketing, but looking using that lens of gaming as an engagement tool. Yeah. And then also we own and operate the HBCU Esports League, yeah. uh, which is the largest you know collegiate league for minorities um, in North America, uh, working with major brands like Discover, Verizon, and then also Nike, uh, where we create this weekly program. Uh, where we're currently averaging about 700,000 viewers a week um, and really are able to showcase these students and their skills and represent their institutions. Yeah, so you weren't, your background wasn't media or advertising or anything like that. No. So how did you, what made you, like, how did you get here? Yeah, for sure. So uh, my degree was actually in pre-physical therapy uh, when I graduated <laughs> from school. Uh, but my first job out of college was doing door-to-door -door sales of technology for voice over IP phone systems at the time. Yeah. Uh, so through that process of just honestly going to work, I had to learn about technology. And through that process, I learned about the implications and how technology is leveraged not only in business, but also in like communications like, and like really interactions. So for me, I, I did that job for the first two years out of school. Um, I went over to an IT consulting firm, uh, all based in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, where I currently live. Did that for two years, learned about cybersecurity, learned about data analytics, about cloud services. Simultaneously, I went to uh, graduate school at Georgia State, yeah. uh, where I got my master's in sports administration. Because for me, I always wanted to pair uh, my love for sports. I played basketball my whole life, played basketball in college, and also my passion for video games. Yeah, I was gonna say, you were a gamer, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, I grew up an only child, so like, if I wasn't playing basketball, I was playing video games, like yeah. at the house, whatever. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it was really blending those two worlds together. Um, and, you know, right around 2018, 2019, I learned about the industry of esports, which was literally the combination of sports and technology. Yeah. So, you know, kind of fast forward, January of 2020 is when I full time left corporate America, uh, started community. And then, of course, a month and a half later, we're in a global pandemic. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that is kind of like what led to us being here today. Yeah, yeah. you're increasing knowledge, you're increasing exposure to HBCUs, to black young people, right? right? What did you notice that made that made you realize that this is a problem that you have to go and solve? Yeah, so it was right around that time of when I found out about esports, 2018, 2019, was going to a lot of events um, that were about gaming throughout the country. And in a lot of the business sessions, you know, it would be me and three other people of color in the entire room despite kind of like knowing my entire upbringing and all of my friends that played games. And it was just weird to see not a lot of us in those spaces. So we started doing research and we found that nearly 83% of African-American teens play games on a weekly basis, but only 2% of video game developers are African-American. So for us, we we're like, how can we turn this space on its head and use what has been historically considered a distraction as a tool of engagement for education, but then also use it as an economic driver for students to generate revenue and income for themselves. Yeah. So that was the background. And then also in Georgia, um, you know, esports is an actual intercollegiate high school sport. Yeah. So the students are, you know, winning state championships, they're getting scholarships, they're going to Georgia State, they're going to Georgia Tech, they're going to the University of Georgia because these institutions had these esports programs to really as an outlet. There were zero HBCUs at the time that had that um, as a career track. So what are the stats? You got? you have like a crazy amount of engagement on, on your platform now. Like how did you like? So what were the what you, we were talking earlier? You shared with me like how fast you guys have grown. Yeah, no, for sure. So um, in the first year of our HBCUs esports league, over 22 broadcasts, we reached an audience of a little over 14 million people. Yeah. Um, so we're currently in the middle of our second season now, uh, where I think we're. And this right is only two years, right? Like uh, yeah, that was year one. We're in the middle of year two right now. Uh, we're at a about 11 million views throughout this season. Um, and we will be finished with season two at the end of April. Season three will start come September. That, that's, I mean, to just think about like in year one to go to 14 million, that's insane. Like that's really insane. And that to me, you're harnessing the power of the culture, the HBCUs, just exposing something that's already innate to the community, Absolutely. right? To your, to your point around that, the black community does play games. People of color do play games and they played a lot. I remember when I was young, exactly. like that was like, you know, at the time it was like, I knew where everybody was at, where all the bikes were, exactly. right? And I was like, all right, we're about to go play some games. 
So this is, it, it, it's really exciting what you're doing. And, and like, as you see this expanding, right? Like, what are, where, like, where do you want to go? Where do you want to go next? Yeah, so like, as I mentioned, over the last couple of years, we've really built out this robust network of K through 12 and collegiate gamers. Um, we're also looking to replicate that in Africa as well, uh, where there's a massive gaming population, but still very underserved and untapped when it comes to these opportunities. And then the same environment that we've educated, we want to bring into Web3. Yeah. Um, so introducing, you know, play to earn and learn to earn mechanisms where students can do exactly what they what they love doing now, learning gaming, but actually generating cryptocurrencies where they can then use that, you know, in that environment around, um, you know, really building up and using it as an economic tool. Yeah. If you needed support, more support for this particular yeah. uh, community in any way, what would you say that would be? A larger microphone, right? I mean, the community exists, the students are ready, the institutions are ready. We as a startup are now looking to work with more organizations that can help elevate our message, elevate the brand, yeah. just to continue raising awareness, you know, that this is an opportunity. We view ourselves as like the AAU of gaming, right? Yeah. So as popular as you have Pop One or as popular as you have AAU basketball, you know, we want this platform to exist in the same manner to start developing that pipeline. Yeah. So really partners and, and corporations that can help elevate that message and continue really helping share the story. Yeah. Well, dude, this has been a great conversation. I appreciate you spending time with me. Yeah, I appreciate it. And enjoy the rest of the show.